Hello, welcome to Erickson Middle School in your 7th or 8th grade science class. I'm Doug Wilhelm, your science teacher. The purpose of this video is to provide you with a course overview, highlight some rules and procedures, and also take a look at some of our online tools and resources. So to start off with, I want to take a look at our course syllabus. Now the first thing you're going to notice when I pull up this course syllabus is that it says 7th grade science. And you may be in one of my 8th grade science classes. I do teach both 7th and 8th grade. I teach 7th grade science periods 1 through 3 and then 8th grade science periods 4, 5, and 7. Besides the grade level and the topics that we study, much of the rules and procedures and online tools and resources are the same for both grade levels. So we're going to take a look at this 7th grade science course syllabus first and the topics that we study and then we'll go over and take a look at the 8th grade science course syllabus and the topics that we study in 8th grade. The first thing that you're going to see here is my contact information. Doug Wilhelm at allenisd.org is my email and then my phone number 972-236-0600 extension 6460. Email is the best way to get in touch with me however if you'd like to call please feel free to do so. Seventh grade science is an interdisciplinary course. We study several different topics however much of the content is focused on organisms and the environment. A good portion of the class involves field investigations and lab investigations, and we really do emphasize our critical thinking and problem-solving skills. <clears throat> the topics that we study in seventh grade are safety and equipment, scientific method and graphing, cell theory and structure, human body systems, biochemistry and digestion, heredity, physics, and then going on to study plants, biodiversity, energy, adaptations, the impact, the impact of natural events and human activity on ecosystems, and the effect of space and Earth's atmosphere on organisms. Now I'm going to go on over and take a look at our 8th grade science course syllabus and the topics that we study there. Again, 8th grade science is also very interdisciplinary in nature. We study several different topics. However, much of the content is focused in on the Earth and space sciences. We do also spend a good portion of our time uh, with lab and field investigations and then also really emphasizing again those critical thinking and problem solving skills. <clears throat> the topics that we study in eighth grade, a review of the fundamentals which is safety equipment, scientific method and graphing, a review of ecology, food chains, energy pyramids, food webs, a review of living systems, cells, human body systems. But Then we go on to study chemistry which is atoms, periodic table, chemical formulas, physical and chemical changes, physics, forces, motion and energy, Astronomy, being the electromagnetic spectrum, universe, galaxy, and stars. Sun, moon, and earth, which is day and night, seasons, moon phases, and tides. Geology, which is plate tectonics, topographic maps, rock cycle. And solar weather and ocean, which is heat transfer, causes of weather, reading maps, forecasting, and ocean currents. Now from here on out, most of what we discuss does apply to both 7th and 8th grade. So even though you see 8th grade, the 8th grade science course syllabus here, it does apply to both grade levels. First thing being classroom expectations. We have high expectations for our kids. We expect them to be prepared, stay on task, be respectful, follow directions. We maintain these high expectations to make sure that they are successful. Let's take a look at some of our homework and testing policies. Again, both of these applying to both 7th and 8th grade. Homework, when assigned, okay, should be turned in on the date that it is due. Okay? If it is not turned in on the due date, it is considered to be late. And there is a set period of time for students to turn in late work. Um, if they turn in their late work within that set period of time, they can receive a maximum grade of a 70 for that late work. For our on-level kids, it is three days after the due date. For our pre-AP kids, it's two days after the due date. If the work is turned in within that time frame, again, they can receive a maximum grade of 70. However, if it is not turned in within that time frame, they will receive a grade of zero. Okay, um, Talking a little bit about uh, redos for tests and assignments. If a student fails an assignment, they can redo an assignment for a maximum grade of 70. Okay, If a student fails a test, then they can also redo that test or do test corrections. Okay? For pre-AP, it's a maximum grade of 60. For on-level kids, it's a maximum grade of 70. Our grading scale, 
Tests and projects make up 40% of the grade. Labs and quizzes account for 35% of the student's overall grade. And daily work and homework make up 25% of the student's overall grade. A couple of miscellaneous items, the most important one here being after an absence, uh, turning in work. If a student is absent, they are given the same number of days that they are absent to turn in their particular assignment that they missed or assignments. So if a student misses three days of school and the assignments within that three day time period, they would have three days once they return back to school to turn in the assignments that uh, they missed. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about what is required, the supplies are required for seventh and eighth grade science. The primary requirement being this three ring binder. Your student needs to have a three ring binder for science. It needs to be um, either a one inch, a one and a half inch, or two inch three ring binder. It says right here a one and a half inch, but uh, one inch is acceptable, two inches is acceptable, somewhere in that, in that range. It should not be a multi-subject binder. It should be a binder that is used for science only. The reason being is that students are going to put all sorts of labs and notes into this binder and then hopefully leave it in the classroom and then just take it home as necessary to study for tests and quizzes and so forth. That way they're not having to carry around something extra all the time. So it's not a multi-subject binder, it's a binder they can use and leave in here in the classroom. Another thing that says that's listed is earphones. Um, lots of times we'll watch videos in class and if kids have earphones or earbuds they can plug into an electronic device and watch that video in class it's not required but it is recommended okay so at this point we're going to take a look at, at some of our online tools and resources so i'm going to go to my class website and on my class website, and I'm sure you'll notice this, there's not much on my class website. It just has one large link to this platform we call Canvas. Canvas is our one-stop shop for everything educational, and it's where we'll spend the vast majority of our time in science class. Okay, it's our main primary online resource tool. Okay, so when your student gets their Canvas login and they log into Canvas, they're gonna see a couple different things here. First, they'll see the home page, okay, which looks very much like my class website. But then they'll see these series of links over here to the left-hand side. This one right here being modules. Modules is where we have all of our content, all of our resources. Uh, you can see for parents, there is teacher schedule and tutoring times, the course syllabus that we just got done looking at, bell schedules, okay, for students, all sorts of other resources with regards to video links, um, different documents and so forth and they're broken down into units okay one of the links you see here is video libraries a lot of the um, homework that goes home will actually be videos in the flipped classroom method of instruction students will watch videos at home they'll watch the one-way communication that comes from me at home and then they'll come back to the classroom to practice what they learned in the video uh, during the school day and in here in the class um, so there will be individual videos, but they can access my video library through Canvas. There's a school access, which is Safari Montage, which they use here at school, and a home access, which is YouTube, which they can use at home. And whenever they click onto either one of these links, it takes them to those video libraries. And they'll be able to log in to the video library and access all the various videos that have been created. And you can see that there are quite a few videos that we use throughout the course of the year. And of course, this is very similar um, to the YouTube version of this as well. So uh, the difference between the two video libraries is the fact that a montage is used at school because YouTube is blocked at school. However, YouTube is usually available at home and YouTube is a little bit, uh, uh, has fewer glitches, if you will, um, and usually works a little bit better at home. So here's the YouTube video library. It's just my, my YouTube channel, then click on videos, 
and again, access all those same videos. So if essentially one method doesn't work, it's always good to try the other method. If the montage doesn't work, try YouTube. If YouTube doesn't work, try montage. So hopefully between the two, uh, students will not have any problems accessing videos. Okay, other things that we see here within modules are again, uh, other links. Um, they can also uh, open up various documents. Um, so for example, we we're talking about the Science Course Syllabus and Safety Agreement. If they click on this link right here, um, it'll open up these documents so I can put all sorts of notes and quizzes onto Canvas so that they can access those notes electronically. Again, they're going to have uh, notes and, and uh, labs in their binder, okay, but this gives them the online version as well. So this was the syllabus that we just got done looking at. Other things that we can do in Canvas, quizzes. Okay, so right here we have quizzes. Uh, students can take quizzes and it provides, it grades them right away and provides them with that immediate feedback. Discussions, those are kind of like uh, online discussions that students can have with each other and with myself. It is a safe and secure discussion site, so only students can have discussions with other students or teachers. Okay, uh, calendar, it provides them with a calendar overview of um, the different assignments that are out there and due dates. Assignments and grades. Uh, grades is important. Canvas is not our uh, grade, grade book. It's not our grade platform, so that's important to note. So there might be grades in Canvas, but um, you need to always access Skyward for the official grade book. Okay, so that kind of takes you through a little bit through Canvas. Uh, students are really going to be engaged with this. They'll be able to teach you all about it. Students will have their own personal login and you will have your own personal login so that you'll be able to see what they're doing and, uh, and be able to get in there and kind of look around within Canvas and their Canvas as well. And it's specific to you. So if you log into uh, your Canvas account, you can only see your students' um, work and their discussions and so forth versus all the other students. So it is very private and very secure. Okay, so another online resource that we want to look at, and I'm going to access that online resource through Canvas, is this right here, which is Fusion. Fusion is our online textbook, okay? So um, a good portion of the textbook is online, and we will be accessing through the internet. However, it's important to note that students will also be provided a hard copy of the textbook. Now, this kind of textbook is uh, a little bit different. This is a consumable, it's a disposable textbook. Okay, so each student will get their own textbook. And essentially, we can take these pages which are perforated and remove them, and we'll take them as needed and put them into our binder. Okay, and students can write on these pages, they can turn in assignments through these pages and so forth. So there is the online portion, which is available at any point in time, and students will also receive a hard copy of the textbook as well. All right, I do believe that takes us through the vast majority of the topics that we need, that we need to discuss. Um, there's lots of other things that will be coming up throughout the course of the year, and I'll be communicating regularly with you about those things. Um, but as for now, I think we're ready to get this year going and get this year started. I'm excited and really looking forward to a very fun and exciting year. Thank you.